Well, joined now by Mark Houck, who's a pro-life advocate, father, founder of The King's Men. And of course, as you've seen on CBN News' coverage, he was acquitted of federal FACE Act charges that stemmed from uh, the Biden administration going after him over an altercation that happened well over a year ago outside of a Planned Parenthood clinic. Mark, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes to join us today. Sure, Dan. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. So first, I want to start with how is your family? You guys obviously went through a very traumatic raid and that whole scene. So how how are your kids doing? How's your family doing after that? Sure. Well, you know, every day's uh, continual uh, growth and healing, I would say. Um, the girls and the boys are at different ages. Um, the older ones can be a little bit better at their conversation and, and wanting to to share how they feel about it. Having recently had some interviews, they felt good about being able to share their thoughts, um, mm -hmm. help them with some healing. When you're dealing with the five-year-old, the seven-year-old, and the three-year-old, you have a you have an issue where they're internalizing a lot of what they experienced. It's very hard for them to show emotions. It's very hard for them to share how they're feeling. So it's a continual vigilance for us as a family to kind of help them process that. I think in time they'll be better. Um, they're definitely they're they're relieved as a result of the acquittal. Uh, but you know it, it, they're traumatized still. So you just never know to the degree that uh, that's going to manifest itself in the future. Um, so we're just just being watchful, attentive to that, and we'll see how it goes. How shocked were you when the FBI showed up at your home? Obviously, um, it was a huge show of force, but you had previously notified them that you would come in if they decided to pursue charges. So um, there was really no need for them to be there in the first place. So what was your reaction to all that? Sure. Well, again, as you said, we we did let them know that we were peaceful and we'd be willing to come down. Just give us a phone call. That was back in May of 2022. By the time the the raid took place on September 23rd, Friday morning, um, I was not expecting to see anyone from the Department of Justice. So I was completely in shock. As we've corresponded with FBI agents, the normal protocol would be to at least follow up on that request. They may still come out and, and, and serve you, but they would at least follow up on that request as a courtesy in kind. That said, we've talked to agents and they said no more than six agents would be necessary. Uh, we received over 20 plus agents and PA state troopers that day. Uh, again, at dark o'clock in the morning, um, alarming the whole house, alarming the children, waking up the children, um, you know, full force of, of everything as, as regards to, uh, you know, what they would bring, uh, you know, battering ram, M16 guns, ballistic shields, ballistic helmets. Um, they were ready to go and they were ready to go for some, some, um, some difficulties. They were going to, they were expecting with that amount of power that there would be a fight on, on their hands. So uh, mm. that's what we learned from the FBI. And it was a complete shock to all of us. It is interesting. And, and it's tough because, you know, I'm sure these agents are put in a tough spot. They have to, they have to treat every, every assignment they're on, I'm sure with the same level of seriousness from their perspective. Did you get any sense from these agents as they, as they, as things started unfolding that maybe, um, there was there any sheepishness? Was there any sort of like kind of hey, I'm sorry, <laughs> we're having to do this, or was it just kind of a normal raid? So from what we understand, the case agent, the lead agent on the uh, the the raid, knew everything about our family, knew everything about who was in the house, knew if there were guns in the house, knew everything. Most of the other agents probably did not know much, if at, if at all anything. Just the details of the home and specifics related to the raid that would tactically be important to them. So the response by most of them was kind of put their heads down, frowns on their face, a little bit of sadness at the kids screaming. Um, when I was in the car, uh, the, the driver, the agent who drove me to the federal building said the same thing, pretty much didn't know anything about me. Uh, he even thanked me for for my um, for, for my uh, willingness to be so accommodating to him, uh, talking about homeschooling on the way down. He he, mm. he said it was a pleasure meeting you. So mm. I think most of the people that were there were not really aware of the story, the case. However, the lead agent would have known all of that and um, you know knew the situation. Yeah. So how were you feeling, especially once you found out that you were facing? I think it was eleven years in prison potentially if you were actually convicted of these charges uh given what we now know about this whole incident seeing it on a video 
Um, how are you feeling as you were facing all of this? Well, sure. So it's surreal. It's not something you're ever planning for. Um, 11 years, $350,000 fine and three years supervised probation. If found guilty uh, from a jury of my peers, 12 in the Philadelphia district, uh, you know, you're, you're not planning for that. No one can really prep you for that. Although I had tremendous peace in my heart. Um, it was a faith journey for me um, from the moment of the arrest to to the day of the trial and the conclusion of the trial. Um, God was present in my life. I felt tremendous grace in the experience being chained and locked to a table uh, and shackled at my feet and waist at the federal building for over six hours. It was a, a tremendous flood of peace in my soul, and my heart. I felt close to my Lord and Savior, Jesus, uh, like never before. Um, I knew he would take care of my family. I knew he would take care of me. Nonetheless, there's still a degree of, you know, fear that, you know, that anyone's going to have, some some anxiety. Very little for me, uh, mostly with my children, probably more so with my wife. Uh, but we moved expecting to be in prison. Um, it was it was the likelihood that that would happen, 98% conviction rate when it comes to federal prosecutors coming after anybody. So likely we were going to send some, spend some time in jail or prison, rather, at a federal imprisonment, um, wherever that would be. Uh, my heart was ready for that. Uh, mm. The acquittal, the jury, the judge, everyone was phenomenal. We had a phenomenal legal team. Really, um, it, it couldn't have asked for a better setup for that as it, as it played out. Um, still, nonetheless, even with a great defense, I thought in my heart that I would be convicted uh, uh, from the jury. Um, so um, not, we were surprised, relieved, and um, you know, certainly felt uh, blessed that, that we had the result we had. Mm, that's amazing. And you know, you mentioned that ninety-eight percent conviction rate, and I remember speaking uh, over the past few months with Peter about this as well. And do you have any lingering questions or desire to kind of find out how in the world this case, as now we can look back on it and see the, the evidence or the lack thereof that they had to justifiable grounds to uh, pursue a FACE Act charge here, just didn't really apply given what happened. Um, are you at all interested in or have any desire to look into what happened to make it go from Bruce Love you know, filing that local complaint, then that getting dropped to how did it then transfer over and catch the interest of the feds? Are you looking into that at all? Oh, we are. And and certainly Thomas More Society is helping us with that. Uh, we have current conversations with former FBI agents, those that know protocol, that would know protocol in the Eastern District, and certainly other FBI whistleblowers that have seen this type of uh, recent occurrence within the, the DOJ. So we're pursuing justice. I have an interview um, with the Judiciary Committee uh, to testify before Congress, um, to hold them accountable, to bring to justice uh, those that, that need to be brought to justice. Um, we're going we're gonna to pursue that with civil rights attorneys. My wife and children didn't deserve what they had happened to them. You could argue that I deserved it on some level because, you know, there's an accusation alleged there and they have to pursue it. But nonetheless, the way they did it and what they did to my family, long-term effects, pain and suffering, if you will, uh, someone needs to be held accountable to that. So we're going to pursue all that. We'll do what we can to help others from this happening to them. Uh, obviously, we now have case law, which helps a lot with the pro-life fight. But, um, you know, it's a delicate balance. Uh, the government has a lot of immunity. Um, there is exposure there. They do have the ability to be sued. And so we'll be pursuing that and, and pursuing all uh, avenues we can to, to hold them accountable. So, Mark, how you talked about your faith a little bit in the midst of this trial and how God kept you uh, from being anxious and that you were just trusting in him. What, what is this whole ordeal done for your faith now as you look back? Well, it's, it's really something that you, you can't plan, as I said. It's not something that, uh, you know, you, you can add to your prayer life and, and just say, okay, this is the way I'm going to go about becoming holier. Um, the Lord allows suffering for a reason, and unjust suffering would be what we experienced. So anytime there's unjust suffering, you, you can respond in despair, or you can respond in anger, righteous anger even, um, or you can move towards... Um, entering into that suffering. And, and I, by that, I mean, it's a surrender 
over to your Lord. And for me, it was placing at the foot of the cross and really just entering into Christ's passion and suffering and seeing it for myself and the gift that it is to me to be like him, to suffer unjustly, be a lamb to the slaughter, allow others to persecute me. Blessed are the persecuted for theirs is the kingdom of, of God, right? So we have uh, this experience that we know is important. And when the Lord gives it to you, you can run from it or you can embrace it. And for me, I, it was just made the most sense to embrace it, to make the most of it, to see the gift in it and to respond accordingly, which was just to accept and, and humbly submit. And in that regard, there, there came great joy. Um, there was peace, as I said. And we asked the Lord to give us greater faith and trust through it. And it happened. It, it, you know, he's faithful to those promises. So, um, you know, we, we moved all the way through the trial, look back now with great gratitude for it, uh, knowing that we have the result we have, but also knowing what the platform he's given me. So now mm -hmm. I can speak about his love and his mercy and his forgiveness in a way like never before. And, and audiences all over the world are being opened up to me. So, you know, I got to say thank you. Thank you to, um, you know, God for the, the blessing of it all. That's awesome. So has has this incident um, deterred you in any way from continuing your pro-life ministry out in front of these Planned Parenthood clinics? Yeah, a lot of people have asked that. We, we went last week for the first time, or two weeks ago, I should say, for the first time, uh, having been court-ordered to avoid Planned Parenthood uh, during the trial. I could not go there, um, and, and my attorneys didn't want me going anywhere else, for that matter, with uh, abortion prayer vigils. So, um, so we had to avoid all that. It was a great reunion for me, a great homecoming, coming back to 12th and Locust in the city of Philadelphia. To be back there where I spent eight hours a week there, uh, it, it felt like a reunion. It felt like a homecoming. Uh, in a weird way, but a, a very good way. I brought my family with me, and we'll continue in that mission. Nothing changes but the date. We just will go right back into mission, and we go right back to the clinics and do what we do. That's what we're called to do. Um, we'll do a lot more interviews, a lot more speaking about it, but none, nonetheless, we'll still continue with the work. That's excellent. Is there is there anything, Mark, that you would – what do you want to share with people um, now that you have this platform? What is sort of the message that you would like to – relate to anyone interested in your story. Sure. So a lot of people in the pro-life movement, especially Dan, have uh, have been taking pause, I should say, and going out to 40 Days for Life prayer vigils, uh, not saying yes to that. So uh, I understand why they would not say yes to it, especially on a local level in the midst of the trial. Uh, I get it. There's some fear there. But I, I would just encourage your audience, anybody that would might hear this, that to not be afraid to fulfill the will of God in your life, to do what God is asking of you. I think every man should go out to a clinic one day a week. I think every man should do that. I think every woman should pray about that as well. Um, going out for an hour to pray, to witness, to be there, um, don't be afraid to fulfill that. The law will protect you. We have case law that will super protect you now as a result of the United States versus Mark Houck. But again, the bigger question is not, will I be protected in the court of law, but to do what God is calling you to do, what you must do, and to not be afraid. And don't let my experience deter you from following that mm -hmm. will of God in your life. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, too, one of the videos that kind of surfaced in the midst of this whole thing was of a couple who had interacted with you and people who were out ministering with you in front of that clinic and they decided to have their baby. And you see the result of that is this couple with their beautiful child. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a wonderful gift. You save a soul, you save your own soul. Uh, that couple we're in continual contact with. In fact, I just corresponded with them yesterday. They're coming back up to the house for mm. uh, another another meet and greet with the family to see the kids and see how the baby, little Nevaeh, is growing. I've also invited another uh, wife, uh, mom uh, with her new daughter to come up to the house that we were a part of saving. So, you know, it, it's such a, a gift to be a part of that in a small way. Um, you know, that God would use us fallible as we are people to, to be his voice, to be his hands and his feet, to help those who are most desperate, um, to really consider, you know, the possibility of choosing life. Um, it's such an honor 
I couldn't I couldn't think of a better thing to do with my day, a, a more important thing to do with my day. Even even the work of being a father sometimes might even take secondary role to that because it's that critical to have a life in jeopardy in the womb. It's worth me removing myself from my family as a homeschool dad, as someone who, you know, likes to be present to his kids. It's worth it for me to go and stand in the gap to be that possible voice that could could spare a human life uh, and allow the God's great gift to be um, to be delivered to, to the hands of a couple who who don't feel sorry about that who don't feel like they have the uh, the gift uh, of of uh, joy in their life when they're receiving mm -hmm. a new baby. Well said, Mark Hauk, and uh, uh, I'm really glad that you are out and that. Uh, uh, the result was the result that it was in court and uh, that you're out doing that ministry and that important work uh, out there. Where And where can people go, by the way, if you if they want to find out about the ministry that you've started? Sure. They can go to thekingsmen.org, and there's a lot of links there. There's even the links to help fight with the legal fight. So, um, but, but there's retreats that we do for men, healing retreats for men, uh, a, lot, a lot of other good, exciting pro programs there at thekingsmen.org. Excellent. All right, Mark, appreciate you stopping by. Hey, thanks so much. I appreciate it, Dan. God bless you.